Before dawn, Errol prepares the Betty H for another day of shrimp boat fishing to see if his 30 years of experience will pay off once again. We try to start right at daylight and walk a while along we can catch some shrimp during that day. Sometimes you don't walk to 12. It's just not economical to walk any later than that. And then, you know, some days it's all day. It's just how everything goes. Some days there's nothing, you know. But, but mainly we, we try to start daylight. For generations, shrimp boat fishermen have left their docks along the coast of South Carolina for the open sea to make their living catching what has become a favorite seafood delicacy. I think that if you, if you ever meet a shrimper and a, and, a, and a shrimper's family, you realize that that is so interwoven with the culture of this, of this area that, it's, um, that, that it's, it's a key aspect to why we actually live here, not because of the shrimp, just because of, because of the, of the the way for many, many, many years people ha have created an industry off the land here. The water, the sea, and I, every moment I get, I want to be out there. Stopping briefly just outside of McClellanville, Errol moves the nets into position. With one man short on his crew today, Errol has to pilot the boat and help deckhand Julius Gathers work the elaborate system of winches and pulleys. Even with decades of experience, it's a two-man job. Once the nets are dropped into the open sea, they will drag them behind the Betty H for several hours, hoping to catch some shrimp. As the Betty H trawls along the coast of South Carolina, Errol hopes to return home with enough shrimp to break even for the day. Brownies a little better. I didn't see that much the other day. Get a brownie, Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna make one more try. Errol and Julius begin the task of separating the shrimp before unloading at the dock. It was just an average day, and with higher fuel costs and the lower price he'll receive at the dock for the shrimp, Errol faces an uncertain future. With 
the ever-growing demands of population growth, overseas imports, and rising costs of day-to-day -day operations, the future of the traditional shrimp boat fishermen looks bleak. I, I think it's got a good future. I, I'm, I'm hoping to, to, to fish in a stay here. Uh, you know, it, it's been going on here a long time. I just think it's something worth preserving. And, uh, you know, we, we're trying to sell a good product and something that's good for you. It's always been here. And, uh, and, and you know, but I, I still think the domestic shrimp industry can, can survive, and I, I, I really think we need it. And it, you know, it's jobs, everything. Restaurant, you know, it, it's just a, right down the line. Docks and fuel, nets, everybody making different things for shrimp nets, boats, you know. And uh, it, it's gonna hurt everybody. <laughs>